Woolworths released better than expected results this morning, with headline earnings per share ticking up over 24%. The retailer ex uh, extends throughout Africa and into the Middle East, trading through more than 400 stores. Woolworths' influence also extends to Australia, with a majority share in the Australian retail uh, chain, Country Road. Bronwyn Seaborn caught up with Ian Moyer, the CEO of Woolworths, and spoke to him about Woolworths' strategy as well as the full year numbers. Here's that conversation. Look, I, I, we've always done that as a business. I think that's our strength. Um, and the way we're structured within the business, we have very focused teams on food and very focused teams on clothing and general merchandise. They understand the customer, they understand what they're looking for. But increasingly, we've been bringing those businesses together. We've seen much more cross shopping, um, we're much clearer on how the customer can cross shop both within clothing and then between foods and clothing. So as a single business we're getting better but each of the individual businesses are very focused and improving and gaining market share. Just digging into some of your numbers now, like I said, really beating expectations. I think what investors are really going to like is the dividend payout. That's up some 38%. Um, you're passing on the benefit you gain from um, not having to pay the secondary tax on companies. Is this something investors can look forward to going into the future? Well, look, at, essentially we won't change our dividend policy. So what we want to do is, is make sure that our, our investors are in the same position as they would otherwise have been. Um, so the SDC is passed on, so the, the, the benefit we get we pass on to our shareholder and the share, shareholder in having to pay tax on that dividend now is in the same net position. Now we have to get into the repurchase of shares, it's always a bit of a touchy subject, perhaps you can explain the rationale behind it. Well, look, we, we went into the market um, to buy back shares when we thought it was the right thing to do for the business. So it's, the board looks at it carefully, is this the right time, should we be buying back? We had surplus cash and we thought it was the appropriate um, decision at that point in time. We're currently not in the market, um, but that doesn't reflect any view on the share necessarily. What it reflects is what we want to do with our cash and the cash surpluses that we have. So what do you want to do with that cash surplus? Well, effectively, if you take out the franchise buyback, uh, you take out what we have done and what we want to do going forward in terms of Africa, um, both from a capital point of view and the, the buyback of the franchises, and then you take the acquisition of witchery, the payment of dividends, um, we're, we're moving to a more and more cash neutral position, and that's the aim of the business, essentially to be in a cash neutral position. So you've touched on almost all of my next couple of questions, so let's dig down into them now. Um, you're buying back all your franchising, it's almost like you want to take control more of the brand. Uh, what's your strategy behind this? But that's essentially part of it. Um, we wanted to make our own business more profitable and we wanted to grow our business faster. So what we were finding was our franchise business wasn't growing as fast as our core business, and um, we were passing more and more of all the gains we were getting in our sourcing and our gross margin. That was being passed on to the franchise. We were losing more and more control. Franchises weren't necessarily wanting to do some of the promotional items, uh, linking into W rewards. So we, we wanted to take control back, we wanted to improve our profitability, and we bought those um, franchises franchises back, um, we've invested a significant sum of money but we're getting nearly a 20% return on our investment. So as a business it's a very sound investment um, and as a brand control mechanism it's proving very effective. Uh, just taking a look at just some of your numbers, while they are stellar, um, Australia feeling a bit of a pinch, um, economic conditions there not as great as over here perhaps on home ground, and yet you've uh, acquired witchery. Uh, what's the Australian strategy going forward, seeing that there is pressure on that consumer? Well, I, I think that marketplace is going to turn. If you look at the economic me metrics, it's got good GDP growth. Unemployment is under 5%. Inflation has, has come down as well within target. So you've got low inflation, falling interest rates, strong Australian dollar. That marketplace will turn, so consumer confidence will come back. What we've done, hopefully, with Witchery has got our timing right. So we were able to buy a business at the bottom of the market for a good, profitable business. It's more profitable than Country Road. We paid five times EBITDA. 
and that's a very good price. So we're, in, we're buying at the right time and investing into the future. We'll have a business of scale, we'll have four complementary brands and we'll be more meaningful in that marketplace and we'll be able to create synergies of around 10 million in bringing those businesses together. So we think with that scale, with those synergies, we'll have a bigger, more profitable business than we currently have. What's your time frame on looking at turning that situation around? Look, we don't really need to turn the business around because it's a very profitable business. So immediately on acquisition, it's um, earnings accretive. It's very earnings accretive in Country Road, but it's also about 4% earnings accretive within uh, Woolworths. So we're buying a good business that is profitable. But to get the synergies, synergies, they're going to take a couple of years to deliver on. There's going to be cost incurred in creating those synergies. Um, but over time, it will be an even more profitable business than it currently is. Things aren't looking too good on home ground here. We had Jill Marcus come out yesterday saying, you know, high unemployment's still a problem, even if we're growing at high rates. Are you at all concerned about the South African market? I'd rather be in South Africa than most other places in the world at the moment, so everything's relative. Um, we're seeing our customer, it's, it's been a tough market, but we've traded well in a tough market, and if a good business has to trade well in a tough market. We're, see, we're not seeing a real change in economic conditions, so for our customers, the pressure on interest rate rises isn't there. Their, com their consumer confidence is relatively similar to where it's been. So yes, a tough market, but no real change, and we're trading well. Um, for now, at least, like you say, you are trading well. Um, other retailers like ShopRite have enjoyed benefits from the high growth rates on the continent. Is it not time for Woolies now to get out on the continent and be a bit more aggressive there? Well, we, we're, we're moving as quickly as we can in, in Africa. Um, and we've been in Africa a long time, but we're, we're largely dependent upon the formalization of the marketplace. You know, Nigeria is a great opportunity, but there's only really two shopping malls in the country. And until there are more, and there will be more relatively quickly, we can't expand any further than that. So we've got a very focused team. We're investing capital. We're expanding in markets. We're buying back from our, our franchisees and moving into joint venture. So we're doing as much as we can to move as quickly as we can and in time that will be a much more material part of the Woolworths business than it is currently. Are you looking at any country specifically? Um, well, we're in a lot of countries, so we've just we've gone into Nigeria, um, we've gone into Mauritius this year. We were already in uh, Kenya, we were in Uganda, Tanzania, we were in Swaziland, Lesotho, we were in Namibia, um, Uganda, so we're, we're, we're in a lot of countries. Um, relatively small store numbers but as I say we'll expand in those countries we'll look at other countries again so in time that business will be um, you know three four times the size it is currently